Hello everyone, so today's uh, video, in it we will discuss uh, AWGN, SNR, SINR, channel capacity, and spectral efficiency. Uh, these topics were supposed to be covered earlier on in the semester, uh, but we uh, were not able to do that because uh, we did not have enough time. At this point, I uh, I'm discussing them, and I will uh, I will give you the the essentials that you need uh, related to these topics uh, in this video. Uh, I will try to keep it as simple as possible. There are ways to complicate these topics, but that's not the goal. So we want to keep it simple. Uh, and if you understand the, the essentials and the basics, this should be uh, enough for you as you move on to your evaluations uh, later, uh, later on, and few uh, in later next week and uh, three weeks uh, from then. Okay, on to the topics. Okay, so before we move into AWGN, I wanted to give you a, um, a quick overview of what do we mean by noise, right? So we said that in a communication channel, uh, you will have different type of uh, deter deterioration uh, uh, that, that, that will happen. In fact, we call it in the channel, but these deteriorations, sometimes they could happen at the transmitter, sometimes at the receiver, and sometimes within the channel itself. So, so we usually lump them and we say it happens on the channel, but it doesn't mean it just physically happens at the channel. Right, so uh, just just so you know, uh, so we discussed uh, in, in previous lectures five key deteriorations uh, uh, that are essential. Doesn't mean there's only five; there are others, but we only try to narrow it down to only five key uh, deterioration. Uh, the first one was distortion. So we gave you uh, the explanation of distortion, and we told you these are things that could happen at the transmitter, at the receiver, with the different subcomponents that you have. For example, a power amplifier. Power amplifier will. Add harmonics uh, because uh, there's going to be some clipping. There's some clipping. It is trying to amplify your signal, but it won't be able uh, to to do it uh, in a proper way without adding some some unwanted uh, harmonics. Uh, and harmonics are are, are are undesired because they will change the input signal. So this is one example of uh, deterioration. Uh, another type of deterioration that that we discussed was the attenuation. There's attenuation that will happen in the channel, literally in the channel uh, between the transmitter and the receiver. So, so essentially, if we're talking in, about wireless communication, uh, this is the power loss that you will have, the, the loss in dBs uh, in the channel, in the air between the transmitter and the receiver. If we're talking about a, 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 a wired communication, uh, you will also have loss uh, in the wire itself, right? So the longer the wire, the more uh, the, the, the loss so you will have more loss, right? So you need to uh, to take that into account. The power will drop. So this is another uh, form of deterioration. Uh, we also have noise, uh, and by noise we essentially mean thermal uh, noise uh, that is uh, introduced into the system. Essentially, this is uh, the, the thermal noise that is detected at the receiver, uh, and this is what I wanted to discuss here. We also have interference, uh, and, and we talked about interference. Uh, interference is is the um, the interference that you may have from other. Uh, uh, devices, other wireless devices uh, that may operate with the same frequency or the, f uh, the same uh, channel, right? Um, whether it's other technologies or the same technology, but but in the end, it's uh, it's it's overlap of channels uh, or. Uh, or frequency. So, for instance, if you look at uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Zigbee, uh, they all operate at 2.4 gig uh, gigahertz, and and therefore this uh, this kind of interference could could happen. Uh, we also uh, the the fifth one that we talked about uh, in previous lectures was fading, uh, and that's the uh, deterioration in the channel uh, due to the obstacles that you have between the transmitter and receiver. So we talk about fading, we talked about uh, large scale fading and small scale fading, shadowing, uh, and and we we mentioned that. I'll, I'll try to perhaps uh, discuss it later on in in uh, in the next video on on mobile communications to kind of give you a refresher on them. Uh, but that was covered. So now let's just look at noise. Um, so noise. Uh, one thing that you should realize is that all communication systems will have an undesired uh, 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 noise, uh, and typically we call it uh, AWGN. This is a jargon that you will hear uh, telecommunication engineers use all the time. Um, so AWGN stands for Additive White 
Gaussian noise. So every one of these letters has a meaning, right? So it's additive, it's not multiplicative, it's not multiplicative noise, it is an additive noise. It's something that is added to your signal. Uh, it is white, which essentially means that it covers all the, the, uh, all the frequencies. Uh, there are other type of uh, noise that are not white, uh, they're colored noise. Um, it's Gaussian, so if you look at uh, a, the distribution of this noise, uh, it has a Gaussian um, distribution uh, and, and, and for, for noise. So, so every one of these letters will give you some bit of information. Okay, and this is the type of noise that it typically exists in, in all communication systems, whether they're wireline communications or wireless communication systems, you will have AWGN. Noise is a fundamental limiting factor in communication systems. Uh, so essentially, noise will not uh, will give you the, your 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 the mat. I mean, you want uh, uh, you want to squeeze your communication system as possible as much as possible to have as much data rate uh, as possible. Uh, but you cannot do that, uh, and this is because uh, the uh, the junk in the channel, the noise in the channel, that will limit how much. Uh, uh, data rate you will have uh, uh, in your communication system. So we'll see more on this as we move on to, to Shannon's capacity uh, and, and it will make more sense uh, then. So uh, you could, of course, noise is a signal, so it's a signal. So we know that signals uh, are, are things that we could see, let's say, with an, uh, with an oscilloscope. Um, that's, that's how you see a signal. And uh, oscilloscope allows you to see signals in the time domain. That's why you have here let me bring my, um, my laser pointer. You have a T here because you you see uh, 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 information of a signal in the in the oscilloscope in the time domain, and the signal could either be voltage or current. That's why you see VT or IT. Uh, so this is a signal. Uh, here you have time domain, and here you have voltage or current, and then uh, it goes uh, into the channel, and at the receiver, uh, uh, it will add uh, uh, thermal noise, right? Thermal noise or Johnson noise. Uh, it, that's what is detected there. Now, if you see, it's just a useless um, uh, uh, signal that, that is unwanted. We don't want this noise. Uh, but the level of it is quite uh, low compared to the signal. I mean, I, this is an ideal scenario. Sometimes it's not, and when the noise is bigger than the signal, that's when you have outage and, and, and your communication uh, won't be good. So you want to, to make sure that your signal is stronger than the noise. Uh, and when we talk about stronger uh, than, than the noise, we're basically saying that the power of the signal should be stronger than the power of the noise. And we'll see this uh, in a minute. So at the receiver, what you end up getting is something like this. Um, so you still get, the, you still see your original uh, signal which this was your original signal, uh, but um, you know you, you have some, some ripples there uh, and that's because of the noise. Okay, so this is your noisy signal. Again, everything is in time domain. This is on the x-axis you have T and on the y-axis you either have voltage uh, or current. So we're looking at it in the time domain. Now the, the question is, can we see noise in the frequency domain? Uh, and, and let's just do that together. So if you look at it in the frequency domain, you will have on the x-axis uh, frequency, uh, uh, and this is what you have here. And on the y-axis, you have it in, uh, in power. Right, the power of the of the signal. So usually, when you use a uh, 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 a spectrum analyzer um, uh, or a signal analyzer, uh, you will see it in dBm. Right, it will be shown to you in dBm. Now, dBm is just a uh, um, a way to to express the value of power uh, in um, uh, in dBs, uh, but it's with reference to milliwatts as opposed to watts, right? So, so ideally, you would w probably want to see dBmW, uh, but for some reason, uh, everybody that uh, that 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 discusses uh, power in dBm, uh, they they drop the W, so that's not shown even with a uh, with your spectrum analyzer that that we used in in this course and in the systems uh, uh, communication systems course last year when you took it uh, with me and with other instructors, uh, you saw that with your USB uh, spectrum analyzer, the W is never shown there. Right, so that's just the way uh, these devices are designed. Uh, so it's a convention not to show the W. So this is uh, some some other uh, thing that you should realize. So in here, uh, when you look at it in the frequency domain, you'll be able right away to identify your signal. 
Uh, and this is an ideal case because, uh, not an ideal case, but this is a good case because you right away can identify the good signal. This is the good uh, uh, signal that you want. Your this one here. This is it. It's just a. It's just a tone. Uh, so it's just a sinusoidal. So the, you'll just have a um, a spike uh, in in the frequency domain and the junk, the noise, the AWGN, uh, the thermal noise, the Johnson noise, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's here. And usually we refer to this as the noise floor. Okay, so this is your signal and this is your noise floor. So this is your AWGN. And here, uh, this is, uh, you should be reminded that you are looking at it in the frequency domain. And it turns out that to identify noise, it is in your interest to always look at it in the frequency domain, not in the, in the time domain. In time domain, identifying noise it will be difficult. You, you you won't be able to do it unless you you whatever you get you subtract it from the uh, from the um, input signal. But sometimes you don't know the input signal, so this is what you get, and you have no idea what the input signal was. Uh, so looking at noise in the time domain is difficult. It is best for you to look at the noise in the frequency uh, domain. So okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to discuss is now that you have this, uh, you have the power here on the y-axis, you have the frequency uh, 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 on the x-axis, uh, you'll be able to, to find your SNR, right? SNR. Uh, SNR stands for signal to noise ratio. It is an important metric for signal quality measured at the receiver, right? So when we talk about SNR, it's always measured at the receiving end of your communication. So remark. SNR is best detected and estimated in frequency domain. The frequency and the power level can be observed through uh, FFT via spectrum analyzer, right? So, so I think we talked about this before. So we use the FFT algorithm. Essentially, a spectrum analyzer is just a device that will uh, apply the FFT algorithm to enable you to see your, uh, your signal in uh, frequency domain. Okay, so, so this should uh, uh, give you a, um, a view of how noise is detected. Okay, so now that we saw how we take the signal uh, and we look at it with, um, you know, special lenses, and these special lenses, um, essentially your spectrum analyzer, allows us to see it in the frequency domain, we'll get the actual information uh, for, for where noise is. At this point, let's go more in depth and see how to make sense of SNR. So we just talked about it earlier, that it's the signal to noise ratio. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen this before um, uh, in other courses as well. Um, uh, we, we talked about it, in fact, last year in the communication systems course. Uh, so this is kind of a refresher. Uh, but now I want to go more in depth into how to, to assess this, how to quantify this. So, uh, so SNR... In linear format, uh, it is simply this, right? So we write SNR. I, I just wrote a uh, uh, the L here. Uh, sometimes people don't do that L just to tell you that it's linear. So I mean, some people want to add this, some people don't. Generally, people don't have the L, but I wanted to add it just so that you see right away uh, that this is in linear format, not in dB format, right? So SNR in linear format, it is the received signal power. And this is generally in, in watts uh, uh, that, that, uh, that you have uh, over the noise power, right? So we saw the signal, we saw the noise, we simply want its power in watts. It could be in milliwatts as well, that's fine as well. So we could write it as S for signal, not, you know, it's just very straightforward. Uh, uh, also with units of watts or milliwatts, and then N for noise. Uh, whether in watts or, or milliwatts. You take a ratio and you get the value. Now notice that SNR is, has no units, right? So in linear format, uh, in, uh, it, it, there's simply no units. You're just dividing uh, watts over watts or milliwatts over milliwatts. Therefore, there are, SNR is a, is a unitless uh, value. Now, uh, you, you know, as engineers and electrical engineers, we, as we said, we always like to discuss everything in dBs. Uh, there's, uh, there, there, there's a lot of value to, to do work uh, with dBs. Uh, uh, the, you know, you have big numbers uh, that, that could be uh, expressed uh, in a nice compact way, and you have really small numbers that could be uh, explained in a nice compact way. So that's the key advantage of using dBs, and we talked about it before, so I don't want to discuss it here. Uh, 
file. So usually you'll find your SNR in a DB format, not in linear format. So in DB, what do you typically do? Uh, not typically, this is what you do. This is the definitive thing that you do. Uh, you write SNR. Now notice that I did the, uh, I wrote DB here instead of L so that you distinguish that now we're talking of DBs and not, uh, uh, not in linear format. You do 10 log 10 of SNR. L. So whatever you got here, you put it in here, uh, and you put it in, in this logarithm, in this uh, expression. Uh, so then what, what you do is the following. You simply enter the, you know, S over N inside the, the log. You do the log, and as you know from, from math, the log is simply, uh, you know, when you, when you divide, you simply subtract the, the top uh, from the denominator. This is what you get. And... Um, you could express this signal uh, in simply writing S signals as dB watt minus noise in dB watt. Uh, and if you want to express it in dBm or dBmW, uh, then you could simply subtract by 30. Subtract by 30, subtract by 30, and then you'll end up getting a signal in dB milliwatt minus noise in dB milliwatt. And so this is just something that you should realize that for SNR uh, in dB format, uh, it does not matter if your values are in dB watts or in dB milliwatts. It doesn't matter. So if you have uh, dB watts and you take the difference between them, that gives you your SNR, uh, uh, SNR value. Or if you have them in dB uh, milliwatt and you take the difference, that also gives you uh, the value. So it doesn't really uh, matter uh, in that case. So this is something that you should realize. Um, SNR will always be in dBs, right? SNR is not going to be in dB watt. It is just the difference, so it cannot be in dB watt. It's a unitless uh, value. Uh, SNR cannot be in dBm. I saw some people uh, did that in the in the midterm. SNR is a value that cannot be in dBm or dBm watt or dB dBw. Uh, it's always in dBs. That's just by definition. Uh, SNR is always in dB or in linear format with no value. So you should be comfortable moving from this to this or from here to there so you'll you'll need the skills and we already saw how to do this uh when we worked with the uh with the first formula and with the link budget so we saw this but i just wanted you to uh to make sure that uh, you're comfortable moving between them now if we bring the figure that i showed you earlier the figure for the signal uh and the uh, uh the signal that we had with the noise and now we're looking at it in the frequency domain i just brought it from the previous slide we have it here uh so you have your signal you have your signal, and we said we're going to call it S, S in dB uh, watts or dB uh, milliwatts, depending on which one uh, uh, it's given to you. Uh, usually, if you use devices, uh, uh, it's always in, in dBm. Uh, and you have your noise. You have your noise here. Now, S and R is simply the, uh, the difference between them. This is the difference between uh, this guy and this one here, right? There's a difference between them, and that gives you your SNR. So you can right away see your SNR uh, uh, visually. You can visualize the SNR uh, in dB by looking at it uh, from your spectrum uh, analyzer. Uh, the question that arises is, where exactly do you look at it on the noise? Is it here? Is it there? So that's that's a skill that you need to figure out. So you need to figure out how to do that. We'll, we'll show you how you can actually quantify noise, and I'll explain it to you uh, in a second. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to, to also relate this to BER, right? We talked about the bit error rate earlier in this course, uh, and we said that uh, BER is a function of, um, uh, you know, EBB not uh, or SNR, the um, uh, SNR, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, like a simplified version uh, of SNR or SNR per bit, um, and um, and so 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 this is just basically BR is a function of SNR. I mean, we could we could just say it this way, uh, and we saw this, we you saw this in uh, in communication systems course in the second part. We saw it for the different uh, modulation schemes that we covered, and we also saw it. Uh, uh, earlier in, in this course, a refresher of what BER is and so on. So if you look at the average BER, you'll have a graph like this. And we saw this before in communication systems. You will have your BER that decreases as the SNR increases, right? So this is what you have. And if you look at it at a specific SNR, uh, you compare, let's say, two, uh, two plots. Uh, certainly the one that will give you the uh, lower BER is better. Right, so that's is why you see uh, this arrow pointing to the to the blue line here, and it says that it is a better curve as opposed to the uh, to the other one. Now, so this is something that is important to realize: is that 
uh, uh, when you have a small SNR, a small SNR, your BER will always be high, right? Uh, a high BER is not something that you want, right? It means that your, your, your communication is not reliable. You send bits, and the majority of the bits that you send are in error. This is, so, so it means your communication is not reliable, on average, right? On average. Uh, so this is a poor communication. Small SNR leads to large BR, or, and large BR leads to SNR. That's why the arrow it points up both ways, and this is not good, it's bad. Uh, this, is, this gives you a poor communication. If you look at uh, a, a large SNR, as the SNR increases, uh, then what happens is that your BER will be lower. And as we saw before, a lower BER is what you want, right? Uh, so if you want um, a highly reliable communication, you know, you want somewhere between 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 6. Uh, sometimes you want ultra high reliability, and people talk on, uh, uh, on uh, of values of 10 to the minus 9, right? I mean, we're not there yet, uh, but but this is uh, the, these are the things that, uh, that, that, that you want. So you really want a really, 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 really small B. Are. And this could happen when your SNR is generally large. Okay, so this is the relationship between SNR and BR, and I think this is a, a valuable thing to um, to have in your um, in your toolkit uh, and as and as a knowledge and, uh, for uh, as we move on in this course. Okay, so now let's now that we've seen noise and we've seen noise in the time domain, we've seen noise in the frequency domain. We saw how we can actually quantify uh, the the difference between noise and signal, and this is a very important metric. It's perhaps one of the key metrics in uh, in our field. Uh, and we saw how we quantified it. We saw how to move from linear to dBs, uh, or from dBs to, to linear format. And we also saw how it is on the figure, uh, on, uh, on the spectrum analyzer, that is. Uh, we've, we were able to visualize it. At this point, let's ask ourselves noise, this noise that you have at the receiver, that is detected at the receiver, this noise, this thermal noise, this Johnson noise. Are we able to somehow quantify it? So, so by, you know, conventional wisdom will lead you to, to believe that noise is random, and you are right, it's a random process. So, you know, you will say, probably I cannot figure out the value of it. Uh, um, and, you know, so it, it is random, you cannot figure out the value of it. But in reality, you will be able to figure out its power uh, and because of averaging. Right? You're averaging and you will be able to, to figure out its power. And this is where uh, things become a bit interesting here. And that's why AWGN, uh, it's not desired, but we could actually quantify it. So let's see how to do that. So additive white Gaussian noise, or AWGN, is present in all electrical circuits. We saw it earlier. I just wanted to, to reiterate here. Uh, AWGN, or additive white Gaussian, is due to thermal agitation of charge and electron inside a conductor. So if you, somebody asks you, what, what's the point of AWGN? Why is it there? The physical meaning of where it comes from is because of thermal agitation uh, in the electronics uh, um, the, in the electronics of your uh, receiver, right? That you have at the receiver. Uh, so AWGN noise, or it's simply AWGN, is commonly referred to as thermal noise or Johnson noise. We already mentioned this before. I just wanted to reiterate again. So let's see this. We saw this uh, earlier. This is uh, where we're taking it from the previous uh, slides. And if you look here, this is the question. We're saying this is our no noise floor. How on earth can we figure this value? Can we estimate this value? Is it possible to somehow obtain a value for this? And it turns out there are ways to do it uh, by simply modeling uh, the, this phenomenon. And we'll see how to model it right now. So, although noise is random, its power can be estimated quite accurately. This is something that you should, uh, you should, uh, you should, uh, you should realize. So, noise, this noise that you see, um, this noise that you see is a random process. Right? So it moves uh, up and down, and every with every uh, uh, instance of your detected signal, you will have a different uh, uh, a different uh, shape for the noise. Uh, but in general, it will be uh, 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 it will be of this format, right? So you'll have a different shape uh, in, in the in the time domain. Uh, but uh, but in the end, it will be uh, it, it will essentially be confined to the floor. It will it's called floor because it's really at the floor floor of your of your figure that's why it's called floor uh, so let's see how to uh, estimate it accurately right let's see how to estimate it accurately uh, 
So SNR uh, in linear format is the signal power over the noise power, and we are trying to figure out this n. We're trying to figure out what the value of n is. So let's see. n can be modeled as follows. So n, uh, this is the noise power, right? Noise power in watts. It could be also in milliwatts. Uh, that, that, that's okay too, but in general it's in watts. It is equal to the noise power spectral density. So we saw PSD before, uh, I believe. Um, if we haven't, then, then we'll discuss it later on. Uh, or perhaps in the communication systems course, we, we discuss uh, PSD. Uh, so PSD is a noise spectral density, and the, uh, the unit for it is in watts per hertz, uh, times the channel bandwidth. Right, so you have to be uh, careful that this is not your baseband bandwidth, this is your passband bandwidth, the channel bandwidth, uh, and that this is uh, taken in hertz. Okay, And this, uh, this, this part here, the, the noise uh, PSD, this one here, the n naught, is in fact equal to, to this here. This is modeled by this. Right? Now what is this? Well, this one here, this KB, are, uh, is Boltzmann constant. This is a, a, a known constant that came out from the work of, uh, of Boltzmann. It's, it's a person. It's a, it's a person that, that did this. Um, and usually they, they don't have the B. They just write K. Uh, but in order to remove confusion and all that, I decided to put a B uh, uh, here so that you know that it's Boltzmann uh, constant. And it's this value here. So it's 1.380649 times 10 to the uh, minus uh, three. Sometimes people simply write it as 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 or 1.38. That, that's fine. So if you do in your exams, uh, you take 1.38 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, watts per uh, hertz Kelvin. This is good uh, for me. By the way, I should mention that this, this unit here, watts over hertz, uh, times Kelvin, uh, this is Kelvin, temperature, right, temperature uh, uh, in Kelvin, uh, Kelvin, not in Celsius, not in Fahrenheit, but in Kelvin. Um, this unit is also equal to joules per, per Kelvin. So you could, you could play around with some of the, the, uh, the, uh, the identities uh, uh, um, in the equalities between the, the units, and you'll figure out that all this, this thing here that you see here is simply equal to joules per Kelvin. This is just a, an interesting fact uh, uh, that might be useful to, to also know. This is the effective noise temperature, right? the effective noise temperature uh, uh, of your device. Uh, and essentially what it is, is the, uh, the noise, uh, the, the temperature that you have of, uh, of your device, uh, plus 273.15 in order to get it in Kelvin. So this is just the, um, you know, something that perhaps you've seen in, in chemistry, uh, in, in organic chemistry or in physics, uh, that Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273 or 273.15 in order to be a bit, uh, a bit uh, precise. And, uh, and then this, we, well, this is your channel bandwidth, right? So now the question is, uh, let's say we operate it in room temperature. Let's say your device operates at room temperature, which is the, which is a reasonable assumption. So if you're designing a system or you are trying to uh, uh, to um, to you know to 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 come up to see if your system uh, the reliability of your system and you're you're taking a uh, the back of the envelope and you want to see how the the reliability of your system is and you want to figure this out. It is not a bad idea to 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 begin with room temperature. Now, by definition, room temperature is somewhere between um, you know, 20 uh, Celsius to 25 Celsius, I say. So I believe if you take 20 Celsius, it's fine. Uh, even in the evaluation, uh, let's always assume in this course that by, for us, room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Different people will have different definition of this. Uh, and it, sometimes it varies from, uh, from countries to countries, depending on their standardization uh, bodies and so on. But let's just consider 20 degrees Celsius. And you figure out the, the, the degrees in Kelvin. So you simply add it to 273.15. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, the receiver the the, the noise uh, uh, the the receiver noise at room temperature. Okay. Now the noise PSD this n naught uh, as we said it's the Boltzmann constant times the temperature and you simply multiply them together. As you see here, I didn't cut it short. I, I kept the entire thing so that we get high precision. Um, and you multiply, you get this. Now the uh, what's what's interesting is uh, you will you know it's not a bad idea if we try to make this as a power of 10. So what you do is essentially you do 10 log 10 of what you have here. 
right? So this is kind of a, uh, a math um, uh, from mathematics, and we know this, right? And then this turns out to be 10 to the power of 0 0.607 times 10 to the minus 21. You, when you multiply, you add, and you end up with 10 to the power of minus 20.393. Okay, and then you could, if you want to, to have a nice number to, to remember and to know, you could simply say that it is noise, uh, PSD is, at room temperature, is 10 to the minus 20.4 watts uh, per hertz. Okay, so that gives us a value for, for this. And now what is left in order to find your noise here is simply to multiply it by your channel bandwidth. Now this, we don't know. I mean, it depends on what type of communication you have. So whichever communication you have, you'll have a certain channel uh, uh, bandwidth, right? So it depends on the, on the standard that you use. It depends on the technology that you use and so on. So you multiply it in the passband uh, channel bandwidth uh, and, and that gives you your, uh, your noise power. And this becomes very amazing. Now, we, although this is uh, a random process, we were able to actually uh, quantify its power uh, quite, uh, quite accurately, I would, I would have to say, uh, using uh, this, this knowledge here. Okay, so this is useful to know. Okay, at this point we are um, uh, we're ready to move uh, to move forward, and and I wanted to I created this the slide just to to explain to you the uh, uh, what do we mean by a receive signal strength and the quality of a of a signal. So wh what do we mean by that? So certainly when we talk about uh, uh, the the you know the the signal strength of a signal in general, uh, people will refer to to SNR, right? So I'll, I'll read you the remark here. There are different ways to measure. Let me get the pointer. There are different ways to measure the signal value and quality at the receiver. Uh, so one way to do that is to use SNR, as we discussed just, just right now or earlier, or SINR, I for interference, or SIR, where you know uh, the noise is suddenly drop and then we just look at it as, as a signal to interference ratio. And there are the different iterations of, of the following. At the end of the day, what you will have is, is a ratio, right? When we talk about the, the quality of your communication, if people want to talk about signals and, and, uh, and how it's compared to the, to the bad stuff, to the deterioration in the channel, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's going to be a ratio. A ratio of the good stuff, your signal, over the bad stuff, all the junk that is added in the channel. Okay, uh, and that's that's what it is. But but don't expect to always see uh, you know one type. You, you'll have different type uh, and 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 depending on the situation. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of unfortunate, uh, but there's a meaning why why we see a different type. And sometimes one wants to emphasize more on one type of deterioration as opposed to the other, and then the focus will be on there. For instance, some people will use SIR as opposed to SINR because they don't see the value of noise, uh, and that okay because you know the noise will will be kind of insignificant in the analysis so they drop it and it simplifies the analysis as well and so sometimes you'll see that uh, as well so so here what do I what I wrote to you is however the most common metrics are SNR and SINR so, so if you read papers or you look at books and you look at different um, uh, uh, different uh, technical documents uh, from uh, from different manufacturers. These are the the kind of metrics that you'll end up seeing: SNR and SINR, more than others. But but it doesn't mean it's only these two. There might be others as well. At the end of the day, uh, it's always a ratio, like I said, of something good, your your good signal, the 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 signal that you wanted, your wanted signal on top over the ratio, right? So it's a so wanted signal on top over the the junk in your communication, all the junk. All the junk is in the bottom, in the in the denominator. So let's see these two, uh, the the SNR and SINR, and how they are typically used for different uh, type of uh, of communication. Now I wanted to classify it in a in a cute and kind of easy way to digest. So so what I did here is performance indicator um, and. Um, so here we're looking at the signal quality uh, at the receiver and we're comparing wireline communication versus wireless communication. Right, so, so we want to compare both of them and see uh, what metrics makes more sense to look at it uh, from, from when, say, we have a wired communication as opposed to a wireless communication. So in a wireline communication, uh, 
we will typically talk of SNR, right? So SNR, uh, which uh, essentially is your signal over the noise. And so this is uh, your, your signal to noise ratio. It has no units. This is your power of the receive signal. And this is the power of a WGA. Okay, this is also something uh, interesting to realize is that distortion is often embedded with the noise, right? We talked about distortion, right? Distortion example, uh, the distortion that is introduced uh, into the different uh, sub uh, subsystems of uh, at the transmitter or different subsystems at the receiver. Uh, 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 for example, a power amplifier uh, and, and the harmonics that it introduces that that's one form of distortion. This is to, sometimes it's it's embedded with the noise. So sometimes you won't see a plus D here uh, because it's, it's taken to be uh, a, a kind of embedded uh, in the noise. So this is, it's modeled this way. Um, so this is something that you should realize. In attenuation, right, attenuation, uh, so let's say you have a, a wire and your signal will attenuate. The power of the signal will attenuate depending on the length of your wire. So the attenuation is sometimes also embedded in the received, uh, uh, not, not often, is in fact embedded in the, uh, in the received uh, uh, signal power, right? So this is also here. Okay. Um, now, if we look at it in the wireless communication uh, perspective, we will generally talk about of SINR, or as we said before, sometimes we talk of SIR. Um, and so if we talk of SINR, we will have S, your, uh, your uh, well, SINR is signal to interference plus noise ratio, so I for interference. Uh, and you have your uh, power of the received signal on top. And in the bottom, you have a power of aggregate interference. So it's, I think it's important to, to realize that this is the aggregate interference. You will get interference from different sources, different um, uh, uh, interfering uh, devices. And, uh, and so all of them, they, they're, they're lumped together. That's why we say the word aggregate. It's just the addition of all of them together. Uh, and, and we put them, uh, we put it in, in, in I. And you have your, your AWG and your thermal noise uh, as well. So we refer to it as SINR. Uh, if we want to sometimes do analysis and, and we think noise will be uh, kind of annoying in the analysis and it's kind of it, it's not that important, you could drop it and you will have signal to interference. Okay, SI, or we will simply refer to it as SIR. Okay, now things to, 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 to observe is that distortion will be embedded in here, in noise, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, and your attenuation, essentially your fading, uh, uh, your attenuation and fading, both of them uh, are embedded in the received uh, power, okay? So this uh, is, is here. So this is kind of, remember we talked about uh, distortion, attenuation, noise, um, uh, interference and fading, and we said essentially that in wireline communication, uh, you will uh, have uh, distortion, attenuation, and noise, and this is what it is. Your distortion is here, you have your attenuation here, and you have your noise here, and they are all uh, uh, shown uh, uh, when you find this metric. And for wireless communication, we said all of them will show up, right? Distortion will be in wireless communication, attenuation will be in wireless communication, noise will be in wireless communication, communication, interference will be in wireless communication, and fading will be in wireless communication. As you can see, all of them are here. Distortion is here, uh, attenuation is here, uh, noise is, all, is basically here as well, uh, and uh, interference is here, and your fading is also here. So all these uh, uh, elements are, are added. Now uh, I should be uh, uh, um, I should be also accurate and tell uh, to tell you that there's also interference in wireline communication and but but here we're kind of not discussing it too much. Uh, it's it's essentially the crosstalk between the wires. So, uh, so you have wires and they're close to each other. You will have crosstalk, right? Uh, it won't be protected in the um, in in in. in, in in the wire itself, it will kind of uh, uh, go to the neighboring wire uh, as well, and we refer to this as crosstalk. But but for the time being, let's assume there's no interference here. We only have these three factors. So I think this is uh, this kind of gives you a sense of how to assess the signal quality at the receiver, depending on uh, wireline or wireless. Um, uh, so so uh, so that's for that. 
sometimes we work on a wireless communication systems, uh, but in a question on an exam, uh, we will ask you to find the SNR, and it's because we're kind of relaxing the situation, and we're assuming you're in an ideal situation where you have no interference. You know, you, know, you live uh, uh, in uh, in you're operating your device in a, in an in an isolated area, and there are no other interfering agents there. Uh, so. Although it's a wireless communication, but we'll f ask you to find the SNR, and that that's fine. Uh, we do that uh, in order to be uh, to be nice to our students, so that they don't uh, break their head finding out what uh, how to assess uh, interference. Okay. Uh, now, but but in in scientific paper, this is what you will typically see for wireless communications. So uh, now that we've seen what AWGN is, and we uh, we learned on how to assess the uh, uh, the quality of the signal that you get at your receiver, uh, so uh, either in SNR or SINR uh, format. At this point, I think we're equipped to uh, to show you. Uh, um, uh, channel capacity. Uh, this is a big, big, vast uh, field. Uh, it is part of a field known as information theory. Um, you know, you could take different courses related to this uh, in the future, but for the time being, I just wanted to show you the basic, the absolute basics of uh, of what capacity is and what it means and where it came from, uh, so so that you 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 understand how uh, how to design a, a communication system. You also understands the the limit of a communication system, right? So it's like a it's like having a lemon, and then you squeeze uh, this lemon as much as possible, and uh, and the, the driplets that come out of your lemon that's that's the data rate, that's the speed of your uh, of your communication. So you want communication devices that are uh, that gives you a uh, very high speed. Uh, um, uh, transmission, right? So you want to be able to download your Netflix very quickly. You want to be able to uh, to send files very quickly. You want to be able to to look at ultra high definition videos uh, uh, that 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 you could download on the spot uh, in in blink of, uh, of an eye. And all this is because uh, you want to have a very fast communication. But but there's a limit, right? You cannot have infinite uh, fastness of a communication. There's a limit of of how fast a communication will be, and this is delineated by uh, by this concept, uh, the, the 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 concept uh, in the theorem of uh, channel capacitor. So we'll go through it, and hopefully you'll see some uh, some basics uh, uh, that that you'll take with you. Uh, so channel capacity is also known as uh, 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 Shannon's capacity. Right, so so it's known as Shannon's capacity because uh, it came from from uh, from a person by the name of uh, uh, Claude Shannon. Okay, uh, and, and we talked about Claude Shannon in the uh, in the first lecture. Remember, I showed you that the short uh, uh, video that was made by the IEEE uh, IT Stock Society, uh, the trailer for the video uh, for the movie that they created, uh, just to kind of uh, uh, introduce you to who uh, Claude Shannon is. Um, and uh, sometimes it's also referred to as the Shannon-Hartley uh, theorem, uh, but but here I'll just limit it to, to Shannon because at the end of the day he is the father of digital uh, communication. Uh, so it was developed by by uh, by Claude Shannon uh, in his uh, really famous uh, paper uh, in 1948. Uh, so he was affiliated with um, with Bell Labs uh, and then later on uh, uh, at MIT. Uh, so, uh, so that's that's Claude Shannon. Uh, Shannon's capacity is the most. I mean, if if you ask me, I think it is the most important formula in digital communications, right? Uh, I think everything that we do in communications, uh, the whole concept of digital communications, come from uh, from from Claude Shannon. It, it, it comes from from his 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 genius and his brain. So uh, so I think it, it is the most important formula uh, in everything that we do right now. Your internet, your connectivity, it's all thanks to uh, to him. So it's the uh, it's the most important formula uh, the, the, the 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 that he, that he basically described in his 1948 foundation for digital communications. So data rate of modern high throughput communication systems are always compared to Shannon capacity. Right? So when you look at the data rate, the throughput of your communication, um, uh, so you always compare it to Shannon capacity to see how far you are away from Shannon's capacity. 
right? So, uh, so here I'm, I give you an example of 5G EMBB, so enhanced mobile broadband communication. So essentially, you know, we talked about how 5G will have uh, three different use cases. One of the use cases is enhanced mobile broadband, uh, uh, broadband which is essentially applications where you want high throughput uh, communication, right? So, so for instance, for AR, uh, 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 for for um, um, uh, 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 augmented reality in our uh, in our, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, you'll you'll need uh, uh, EMBB right. This is one example of where EMBB is used. So in here for five G uh, uh, within uh, so five G EMBB will give you speed of up to one gigabits per second. Uh, uh, sometimes even faster, up to ten gigabits per second. Uh, so we're not here yet. Uh, there's some experiments here, uh, but but eventually that's what you want. So you really have a very fast communication. And when people do this, they always compare their system to Shannon's capacity. So understanding what Shannon's capacity is uh, it becomes very uh, important. So let's see what it is. Uh, so the most basic way to explain Shannon's capacity is this equation. So, uh, so this is the equation for Shannon's capacity. C is the channel capacity. So basically what it means is the maximum achievable data rate for reliable communication. Right? In order to have a communication that is reliable, uh, um, uh, 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 right? so, so your communication will be reliable, uh, uh, you could also have it very close to error-free communication. Uh, this is uh, what, what, what the constant is. What, what, not the constant, but this is what the, the variable is. The, the variable C is for channel uh, capacity. So the, the measure, the unit for channel uh, capacity is in BPS, right? so bits uh, per second. Okay, uh, what else do we have? We have BCH, right? So the channel uh, bandwidth. So this is at the passband, not at the baseband. So this is at the passband bandwidth. Similar to what we saw earlier when we assess the, the noise, uh, um, uh, the AWGN noise, right? We saw that we use the, uh, the bandwidth of the channel. Right, this is what it is. Uh, so this is in hertz, and then you take the log. Now be careful. This is log to the power of two because we're talking about bits. Uh, uh, we're talking about two states, zeros and one. So it is to the power of two. When we work on uh, 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 link budget, and when we work on SNR, and when we work on receive power, we we'll always talk, and then we change them to uh, dB uh, or dBm or dBm watt. We always do log ten. But here, when we talk about capacity, it is. To. So you have to be careful well, when you do when you play around with your calculator. And then the inside of the log is one uh, plus SNR. And this SNR should be in linear format, not in dB. So another mistake that students do is uh, well, the first mistake is they they think this is log ten. This is not log ten. This is log two. And then the second mistake that generally students do is they consider this SNR to be uh, they I don't know what they don't care whatever it's given in the question they enter it whether in dB or in linear format. It's not. It's always in linear format. That's why uh, you see the L here. Okay, so this is the signal to noise ratio it must be in linear format. There's no units, right? It's a ratio of two uh, powers. Okay, a uh, couple of things that you we could do here. Uh, the SNR uh, per L, we could actually uh, uh, express what it is. So uh, uh, SNR in linear format is a signal over noise. Uh, and this is your signal is essentially your the power that you receive at the receiver. And we saw this, right? We saw how to obtain this uh, um, uh, when we did the link budget, right? We did the link budget in order to determine what is the power at the receiver. Right, so so this we saw how to determine. So we know how to do this, and uh, n is essentially the uh, 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 your n naught, right? Your your noise, uh, your uh, PSD times the uh, the bandwidth. Right, we saw it just earlier on the previous uh, slide. Now, if you uh, uh, play around or you take the concept that we saw earlier in the communication systems course, uh, the previous course, we realize that the power received is equal to eb the energy of each bit times the data rate, the data rate of your communication, right? The, uh, uh, the data rate of the communication, uh, uh, RB, okay? Uh, and, and, and you could use that. So this is also a useful thing to, to, to realize that your receipt power is simply equal to this. And so essentially you have uh, your SNR that could be expressed as this or uh, as this. So you have your, the energy per bit, 
uh, uh, and you also have the data rate, bits per second of your communication, you have your noise, and you have your channel. Okay, so that quantifies this thing here. Now, a couple of things to know about this equation is that this equation is only true for AWGN channel. Right? This is only true if you have an AWGN channel, this is kind of most basic uh, uh, communication channel. It is not true for other type of environments. Uh, so for wireless channels, the formula will somehow vary. Right? I use somehow and I put an underline just to tell you that somehow uh, um, you'll, you'll, you'll have some expectation, you'll have some averaging, you'll have uh, your, your fading in, in here as well. So, so it will be different. Right? You have to do some averaging and the expression will be different. But this is just for AWG. Okay, uh, this equation, right? This equation will give you C. In this C, you could think of it as uh, as as the speed of light, right? So, uh, like I wrote to you here, like the speed of light, Shannon's capacity is a fundamental limit. Practical telecommunications uh, uh, cannot communicate reliably with data rate faster than C. Right, as we know in uh, in in physics, the speed of light three times ten to the uh, to the eight meters per second is a is is it is the is the fastest thing that exists in our reality. You can never have anything that can go faster than the speed of light. Right, so this is a a a, a fundamental fact that that we know. And it's the same thing with channels capacity. You could think of it this way: is that this value is is the maximum uh, uh, data rate that your communication can have. Uh, so you're squeezing your lemon. This is the maximum that you can have uh, uh, for reliable communication. If you go beyond that, you won't have reliable communication. So practical uh, systems that exist in real life will always be less than this, less than C. Right? Practical communication systems, uh, whether you have Wi-Fi, Zigbee, uh, LTE, 5G, uh, 6G, whatever you have, it will always be less than the capacity. Practical systems, right? Less than this. This is in bits per second. This is also in bits per second. Okay. Okay, so now at this point, I think we are we have all the uh, what is needed to move on to uh, spectral efficiency. Right? This is a, a very, very important topic. You'll hear the word spectral efficiency every time people talk of uh, system level communications. Uh, and uh, you'll hear it uh, as well with 5G. And uh, so this is a, 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 a one of the jargon of, of, of our field that you'll hear all the time. And we'll see what it means uh, as we go on. So bandwidth of the frequency spectrum is a limited uh, or expensive resource. Right, so the bandwidth we said the bandwidth uh, is a limited. So you have your your electromagnetic spectrum, and uh, the spectrum is managed by different uh, 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 by different uh, agencies, uh, each within their own countries. So according to the ITU, every country they have their own kind of rights to to manage their own spectrum. Uh, so uh, so for us here in Canada, it's ICED uh, that manages the spectrum. Uh, is that ministry that manages the spectrum, uh, and they 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 sell it to people that that want to buy the uh, part of the uh, the you know part of the spectrum, and it is a limited resource, right? So you only have one spectrum, uh, and it's just when it's done, every everything on the spectrum is used. You, you can't do anything, right? So it's a limited resource, uh, and therefore it's a very expensive resource. You have to pay a lot uh, for it. Uh, and because it's limited and because it's expensive, it has to be used efficiently. So you don't want to just use it uh, willy-nilly. You, you really have to be efficient in the way that you use uh, the spectrum. So spectral efficiency, this is, this is what it is. Let me get my, uh, my pointer. Uh, spectral efficiency is this metric here. New, the, the Greek letter new, and I put S here for, for spectral efficiency, is equal to the data rate of your communication depending on what type of communication you have, the data rate of your communication, this is in bits per second, and the the bandwidth of your communication, right? The the channel bandwidth of your communication. So you do the uh, the uh, the division of it, right? So you divide all this. And this kind of lets you know how efficient you are using the uh, the channel. How efficiently are you using this channel? And this is a metric that will be that will be that is used all the time to see how uh, how your how how efficient is your communication uh, um, uh, that that you're applying. Okay, and so so what what ends up being uh, the uh, the units for for new. Uh, for the spectral efficiency is BPS or bits uh, per second over hertz. Or sometimes you'll see B uh, 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 bits over uh, second 
over hertz. So it's the same thing. So BPS over hertz or B over S over uh, uh, HZ. It's, it's just the same thing. Okay. Now, uh, spectral efficiency uh, is a very important metric in wireless communications, like I, like I told you. And spectral efficiency is a measure of how efficiently a limited frequency is used to transmit information data. So you have how much can you pump out uh, 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 bits per second for every hertz of the spectrum, right? The bigger this, this is, the better it is. The smaller the value, the, 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 the less efficient your system is, right? You're not using the spectrum efficiently. And you want it to be efficient because it's, it's expensive, it's limited. So you want to be efficient. Uh, so... Uh, from what we saw earlier, for practical systems, any practical system, depending on what it is, uh, uh, whether it's uh, Wi-Fi, whether it's V to X, whether it's um, uh, DSRC, whether it's uh, 5G, whether it's LTE, A, uh, whether it's um, narrowband IoT, it doesn't matter. Any type of communication, the data rate, the data rate that you have should always be less than Shannon's capacity. That's that's by definition. That's what it should be. This is a fundamental limit, and that's why you have to be less than Shannon's capacity. We just explained it earlier. Now, if we do uh, some, you, we we play around with some equations here. So instead of C, we could just bring Shannon's capacity here. We could just uh, the the channel capacity. Uh, we write it uh, so we know that it's uh, it's the uh, the channel uh, bandwidth times log base two. I, I I think on on the previous slide I said power two. And uh, my, my my mistake. It, I, I should say base two. Uh, and then inside the log you have one plus uh, EB, uh, the uh, the joules, uh, the uh, the energy uh, per bit over the PSD of the noise times the data rate of your communication over the channel bandwidth. So this and this, they're the same. This and this, they're the same. Right? This and this, they're the same. This and this, they're the same. So that's that's what we have. So let's let's do let's let's kind of uh, clean up this equation a bit, move things around. So if we bring the, uh, uh, the, the bandwidth and we divide uh, both sides, so we end up getting this. Uh, and then uh, next, what we realize is this thing here, by definition, is your spectral efficiency. So we could just write uh, our new uh, for spectral efficiency. Less than log base to 1 plus EB uh, over N naught. And then this thing here, right, is also your spectral efficiency. So you have it here. Okay. Now at this point, what we have left is we. At this point, what we essentially want to do is uh, is have some relationship uh, between uh, N S and, and E B uh, over N naught, right? So, so this is kind of your your S N R, if you will, right? Your uh, uh, no, we call it EB naught, as we saw in the communication systems course uh, last year, uh, which is your S N R per bit. This is your S N R per bit, and we want to have some relationship between the spectral efficiency and your SNR per bit or EB naught. So we play around. We do uh, uh, two to the power of NS, uh, and then the inside of the log is one plus EB naught uh, times uh, NS, and uh, we move things around. And so we have our SNR per bit or EB naught uh, greater than two NS minus one over NS. Okay, so this is what we get. So this turns out to be a, a, an interesting equation uh, that we could use. Now, rem be, remember that this equation, this thing here, is only true for AWGN. This is not. This does not apply for other t channels, including wireless channels, right? Uh, unless we're kind of considering wireless channel to be AWGN, which is not a, a kind of an accurate, uh, an accurate uh, view here. Uh, but this is only true for an AWGN channel. This equation here. So let's see how to plot it. So we're, we'll be able to plot this. We'll have our spectral efficiency over uh, our SNR per bit or EB naught. Uh, this is in dB, and this is uh, uh, in, so here the plot is in uh, logarithmic scale. And this is what you have. So you have the plot of EB naught over uh, 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 EB, EB over N naught uh, to this. And if they are equal, it will be this blue line, this blue line. So if you have this blue line, essentially your the data rate of your communication and the uh, uh, and Shannon's capacity are equal. This is where we want to be. Ideally, uh, everybody is uh, all the engineers and the scientists and the researchers. They want to be here. They want to be here. 
Now, how to get here? Well, this is very complicated. You need, you need to use different type of uh, coding scheme uh, and so on. Uh, so to, to do this, you need to have sophisticated systems. Basically, all the people that, that do uh, research, they essentially, uh, their goal is to essentially bring us to Shannon's capacity, to Shannon's limit, right, to, to this line here. Uh, but we're not here. We are, we have practical systems. Practical systems will have a data rate that is less than uh, Shannon's uh, capacity. So we'll be somewhere here. Right? Ideally, you want to be close to this line, uh, but in real life, you'll be anywhere here. Right? Uh, if you are above this line, if you're above this line, then this is not an, a, a reliable system. This is an unreliable, not a, uh, not a good system, a system that will have a lot of errors. You can still have a system that, uh, that, uh, that has this, but your system will not be reliable. What you send is not what you get. Right? You will get basically uh, a, a garbage signal all the time. Right? Um, so you send a good signal, you get a garbage signal. So this is not uh, what you want. In order to have a reliable system, you always want to be below this curve. Okay. Now, uh, this is also interesting. We could uh, we could determine uh, Shannon's limit, uh, and and Shannon's limit uh, um, uh, can be determined as you take uh, the uh, the value to. Um, uh, uh, to infinity, right? So, so you could find it, and then you could determine that uh, you take the limit, um, and um, and then you'll figure out uh, that uh, that the value is uh, is uh, minus one point six dB. So you need here, you need to use uh, some uh, uh, some concepts from uh, from calculus, right? So from Cal one. Right, um, uh, you could use hospital, uh, l'hôpital, and all that to, to figure this out. So you could just uh, uh, use some calculus to, to to find this using this equation. Okay, here I'll just give it to you. It's minus 1.6 dB, and this is known as Shannon's limit. Now, uh, you might be interested to figure out what is the uh, spectral efficiency of different systems. So for 1G, uh, this is around uh, in the early 80s, uh, so the spectral efficiency uh, uh, was about 0.45. Right, 0.45. And we said smaller spectral efficiencies are not good. You want to have a spectral efficiency that is big. The bigger the spectral efficiency, the more the smarter you are using your uh, your 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 spectrum. Right, the, your, you are using it in a smart way. You have a sophisticated system. Uh, 2G uh, has a, uh, a GSM 2G system uh, at 0.52. A 3G CDMA system uh, at 2.50, 2.5 uh, uh, spectral efficiency. This is, a, by the way, this is the maximum spectral efficiency. So um, generally, you'll you'll end up with something less than this, but this is the maximum. Uh, for 4G LTE advanced, uh, you have some something around 3.75. Uh, and by the way, mind you that for 4G and this value here that I show you, the 3.75, it assumes it assumes a, a CISO communication, right? So, so your transmitter only has one antenna, and your receiver only has one antenna. So it's not a MIMO communication. It is not a two by two MIMO communication. It is not a four by four uh, MIMO communication or an eight by eight. This is just two, one antenna at the transmitter, one antenna at the receiver. If you use uh, multiple antennas, and this is where we enter into the topic of MIMO, and now in 5G in massive MIMO, then you have a lot of antennas. And you have a, if you have a lot of antennas, uh, the, uh, the spectrum uh, efficiency uh, becomes way better. Right? So, so in, uh, having a MIMO communication uh, improves the spectral efficiency. But these numbers that you see here, uh, 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 where they, they are all based on, on CISO communication. Single input, single output communication, one antenna at the transmitter, one antenna at the receiver. Uh, and if you look at Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi is an unlicensed technology. So, so you could just connect any device and, and then you'll have Wi-Fi uh, frequency. Uh, it has a high uh, uh, spectral spectrum uh, efficiency. So you have a, your, your spectrum that is used uh, efficiently uh, in here for Wi-Fi. So this, uh, this is not, uh, this is the, uh, this is the Wi-Fi that, uh, that uh, the, 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 the AC one, the, the 802.11 AC, IEEE 802.11 AC. Okay. So I think that kind of gives you a, a big picture of, of what uh, uh, spectral efficiency is. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a useful uh, um, uh, uh, metric and a useful value to know as you study this, uh, uh, the, the field of wireless communications.
Okay. I think that covers it for, for this lecture. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for listening, and I will post the next video uh, soon. It will be on, on mobile communications, uh, frequency reuse uh, in uh, soon. Thank you.